Ten nine wadi, be thankful unto the Most High, Mother, Father, Creator of the Universe, Kudzai Mudzimu Mukuru. Give praises unto our great ancestors, Abibi Fahodie, Abibi Tumi, African liberation and African power for all African people. Welcome back for another edition of the Pan-African Question, where we give short, concise answers to popular questions asked about Pan-African theory, ideology and practice. After my first two videos, I realised I had to do a part three. Why? Because I missed out something, yeah? I gave some very specific definitions in terms of schools of thought of Pan-Africanism and I need really to give the broader overarching uh, definitions as well so people understand the thing from its broadest um, sense uh, because this ain't just supposed to be about me and what I deal with in terms of Pan-Africanism. We're hoping to be able to broaden people's understanding of the thing in general, all right? And also I know that brothers and sisters who are questioning, yeah, you know what I'm saying, whether we should continue to be using this terminology. And I, I, I accept and I admit, yeah, I confess, I've been one of those people and sometimes I still am, yeah? Um, it, it, whilst I sympathize with the argument, it's today um, we understand that communicatively, yeah, for communication purposes, the term is popular, it's accessible, and it's a window in to having these conversations, all right? So whatever your perspective on that issue, you know what I'm saying, follow the journey and please feed in, yeah? You know what I'm saying, and them kind of things there. So let's get into it. The first definition I am going to drop, yeah, is provided by a brother by the name of Kofi Mawuli Clue, yeah? Uh, from an organization called the Pan-African Reparations Coalition of Europe, um, based in uh, the UK, all right? Um, and he gives an overarching definition which reads, Pan-Africanism is an anti-imperialist, decolonizational movement, rallying together a broad array of all African loving forces that are interested in link networking, globally, that's globally and locally, in pursuit of various configurations of an independent, worldwide, political, ideological, cultural and organisation frameworks of struggle for the total liberation, unification and self-determined progression of Africans and our kith and kin. All right. So there's a lot of big words in that definition, like decolonizational, yeah, and anti-imperialist. All right. Um, but we'll go into what those words mean in another video more in depth. But for now, just to say that they're responding to the global hegemony, yeah, of Western uh, domination, Western imperialism, yeah. And these, this system of Western hegemony and domination uh, has manifested in a number of different forms, most notably uh, enslavement, colonization, and neocolonization. And that's what that is referring to. We also want to emphasize the words, yeah? Um, political, ideological, cultural, and organization, yeah? Um, and we're going to get into what these words mean in a second, but just for now, to emphasize the term organization, because really what Pan-Africanism produces, yeah, is, or it's designed to produce, is um, ground up organizational structures, developing functional and operational unity and maximizing that to the ultimate goal, which is nation building. The next definition I'm going to give is by uh, an elder sister by the name of Omotayo Oluruntoba Oju. Yeah, she is a lecturer at a university um, in Nigeria. And um, in a particular paper that she's written dealing with Pan Africanism, in on the continent and in the Caribbean, she has uh, given some explanation um, about Pan-Africanism and it is relatively useful. So we're going to go into this right about now. Pan-Africanism is frequently defined as, quote, an intellectual movement conceived by people of African descent, mainly in Africa, in the Caribbean and the USA. And you can see the reference for what she's quoting uh, on your screen. And one that consciously and deliberately attempts to create bonds of solidarity based upon a commonality of fate imposed by the transatlantic slave trade and its aftermath. And again, you can see the citation. So 
yeah, we get first and foremost that Pan-Africanism is about Africans all around the world, all right? We want to disavow you of this myth that is specific to any part of the black world, that some people say that Af Pan-Africanism is just about Africans on the continent. And some people actually say that it ain't got nothing to do with Africans on the continent. This is some dreamy African diaspora thing you Caribbeans and you black Americans come up with on your own, whatever steam, yeah? Forget and they don't take account of the collaboration and the, and the mutual development of these sensibilities among Africans on the continent um, and in the diaspora. So we want to emphasize that point right about now, that all of these forces have um, contributed to the development of Pan-Africanism in theory and practice. And this development is conscious and deliberate, right? So this is based upon a conscious realization and understanding of who we are and what we want to become and putting in place ideas and strategies to make that happen, yeah? So this is not accident or happenstance, but it's a conscious idea with a conscious uh, goal. It is also important to understand that there is no dichotomy between Africans organizing on the continent and Africans organizing in the diaspora, yeah? The worldwide uh, ability and capacity of Pan-Africanism is that whilst we have a homeland, wherever we are, we operate as a nation. So if you are an African fighting on behalf of Africans, anywhere in the world, you can still be a Pan-Africanist, yeah? Um, the focus is Mama Africa as the base, the home base, the headquarters, but that home base is intended to empower Africans all around the world. I do want to challenge, however, this reliance upon um, the so-called slave trade, or what we prefer to re refer to as the uh, the traffic in enslaved Africans, because we disavow this idea that our ancestors yeah, were property of Europeans, and you're only trading property, not people. Yeah, um, It is true that Pan-Africanism developed, yeah, organizational structure in response, yeah, to um, the transatlantic trafficking of enslaved Africans and its aftermath, namely colonialism. However, many would argue, and she does go on to explain this somewhat, but I'm just explaining it here for now. Many got, would argue that it has ancient origins. If we deal with the work of people like Baba John Henry Clark, yeah, the great historian, he would date the origin of Pan-Africanism to the uniting of Upper and Lower Kemet, which is like 3,500 or 5,600 BC, if we go by the long uh, uh, Egyptian chronology or Kemetu chronology as provided by um, brother Robin Walker in the book, When We Ruled. Yeah, so check that out. Um, and then you go to the work of Baba Sheikh Anta Diop, yeah, um, in Two works in particular. One is entitled The Cultural Unity of Black Africa and another entitled Black Africa, The Cultural and Economic Basis for a Federated State. He's arguing that um, there is, as the title says, cultural unity already exists organically among Black Africans. And this provides us yeah, with the unifying basis to develop uh, states in terms of politics and economics. And in uh, the, the, the book, Black Africa, he says the following. A consideration of the structure of pre-colonial African family, that of the state, the accompanying philosophical and moral concepts and the like, reveals a consistent cultural unity resulting from similar adaptations to the same material and physical conditions of life. So we see some basic themes there, yeah, in terms of pre-colonial Black Africa, yeah? And so the, the foundation of Pan-Africanism as an ideology pre-existed, yeah, the transatlantic trafficking in enslaved Africans is a point that we're making here. Let's go on. It is also seen as, quote, a quest for unity amongst continental and diaspora Africans, a revival of undeniable so-called African traits and traditions, and finally, political and economic independence. So you can see she's kind of just explaining what I've just tried to explain uh, with a bit more detail. She continues, the movement has Africa as its central motif and the validation and emancipation of Africa as a constant preoccupation. It has been described further as solidarity among people of African descent, belief in a distinct African personality, rehabilitation of African past and 
expression of pride in Africa. In all, Pan-Africanism was and remains crucial to the formation of a universal black identity derived from a consciousness that all black people emerged historically from Africa. So again, we're just emphasizing here yeah, the foundation of the philosophy and, uh, and the ideology. One, that we, got, we have cultural unity and two, that we emerge here yeah, from this landmass um, called Africa upon which um, the majority of our culture was um, developed. However, because it is a worldwide philosophy, it takes into consideration how Africans have developed our cultures outside of the continent. But the, the central force, unifying force, is the understanding that these ideas, these principles, these values, these expressions are fundamentally African and must uh, be coalesced yeah, in terms of you know, achieving a goal that is just and beneficial to African people worldwide. She also mentions rehabilitation of our past, yeah? A part of the colonial project was the dismantling of African history and the imposition of a history that suits and serves the interests of colonizers. 